I'd like to call this meeting of the Select Board to order on September 17th. Uh, first thing is additions and deletion. Uh, we're going to delete uh, the permit for turkey trots. Uh, that was my mistake. I thought they came through the town, but they just uh, go through the village and the trustees approved their permit last week. Uh, we're also going to uh, delete the discussion on the Woodstock Aqueduct Company. Uh, we had hoped to have an update today, uh, but some things have changed. So we hope to have an update in a few days. Citizens comments? <clears throat> Your name and hi, good evening. My name is Ella Herber Shield. Uh, I work for the Vermont Department of Health as the new prevention consultant in White River Junction, and so I'm just here to introduce myself. Um, I'll leave behind cards for you all. Um, I'm a support system and, and resource for you all in the work around substance misuse prevention that happens here in Woodstock. Um, so I have connected with the fire and EMS department, um, but would love to chat with you all if you have thoughts or ideas or questions about anything happening at the state level um, with regards to uh, any substance misuse. Uh, that is all. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Anything else? I'm not seeing anything online. Okay. Manager's update. Uh, Thank you, Ray. Um, I started off with um, some sad news. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, Eddie English passed away, uh, I believe, last night. Um, he was a fixture in Woodstock. Um, I believe his family owned uh, a house back in the 17th century uh, on Prosper, where it actually was called English Mill, I believe, if named after the family. Uh, he was a fixture in town hall, town meetings uh, at the Thompson Center five days a week. Uh, I think we're all going to miss his presence, his joking, his laughing. And uh, I just want to let the community know um, how much we're thinking of him and uh, that uh, sad loss of Woodstock. Thank you. Um, moving on, um, we are currently working on, uh, repairing the two bridges behind, uh, the Welcome Center and Vail Field. Uh, we've made some progress on Vail. Uh, we're hoping to be able to uh, complete that this winter. Um, and then the bridge on, uh, on Mechanic Street in the spring of next year. Um, so those things are happening soon. Uh, one issue with Vail Field is just the time of the year, but also we have to get the equipment onto the field and with it being used a lot in fall, uh, we don't want to do that either. Um, we're into full foliage prep, um, so we're adding um, barrels down downtown. We have a DPW on overtime on the weekends. We have the whoever's on call in the Sioux on the weekends come and do a pass by to make sure trash is picked up uh, through the village. Uh, we're also trying to make sure the village, the town looks good for all the visitors that are coming in. Um, I'm still fielding some calls from uh, national news about um, Cloudland Road and closure. So I'm sure they'll get some more press going forward, uh, but we should be all set for hopefully a good foliage season for the next month or so. Um, last thing uh, to do, uh, we have a special guest here tonight. Uh, Weidra is here from Indonesia. Um, she, uh, has come through us through the ICMA fellowship. Uh, so she's going to be here for a month with us. Uh, she arrived on Saturday. Uh, I met her on Sunday, took her around, uh, the last two days, she's been reaching out to people in the community, uh, reaching out to people who could be, uh, of help to her as she works on one or two projects for us. And the goal was to take those projects back to Bali, where she's from and kind of implement them there as well. Uh, but I want your opportunity if you want to come up and introduce yourself uh, and speak a little bit. Yeah, of course. So, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Wija. I'm from Bali, Indonesia. So, I'm working in a nonprofit called Deltera. It's a waste management transformation program. We support the city government into a recycling based communities. So, in Indonesia, it only covers 30% of the population of collection and disposal system. The rest is they just burn the waste and uh, dump it on an illegal dumping or to the environment. It's bad. And now I'm joining a Department of State Fellowship Program uh, with ICMA. And thanks, Eric, for hosting me. And I'm grateful that my placement is in Woodstock at the perfect timing. And I really 
want to help and contribute to the project. So there is uh, there are two projects that I'm interested in. First is the mitigation and adaptation plan for the flood uh, management. Since it is a very critical uh, issue in Woodstock uh, last year and during 2011. So the second one is the project for affordable housing. Since Woodstock also want to attract workers uh, and employee for the business support and also for the public services to fill in the position there. So yeah, thanks for having me and see you around. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, that's all I have for my updates. Right. So next is to look at licenses. And I guess we can approve both at the same time because we have nothing to do with them. Are you looking at me? Yes. <laughs> you have the wording down. Yeah, I would um, move that we or we approve the outdoor consumption and the third class liquor licenses for the Atacuchi Yacht Club based on the assumption that the state is reviewing the applications since they no longer give us enough information to do so ourselves. Is there a second? Oh, yeah. Uh, do you mind just coming to the podium so we can catch you? Thank you. I just had a quick clarification or question. I thought on the agenda there was the third class license. I thought the town did the first class and the liquor department does the third, but I just wanted to make sure I'm a little under the gun with dates, so I wanted to make sure there wasn't a glitch or anything. Is it normally the third that you guys approve? The town clerk. So I'm sorry, the town clerk, yeah, and then once we approve it, it goes to it gets sent to yeah, the state. Yeah, there's a first class and then there's a third class. I just want to make sure everything gets approved. And it looks gets... like we have a... Are you applying for a first or a third? Both. Oh, both. So we okay. have the third class here. The and first then... has to be approved by us first, I think. We have the outside uh, consumption, and then we have the third class. We must not have received the first class. Oh. It was all submitted, and I sent, I gave a check to the town. I can, I'll check with um, the clerk uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, when when are they when when's there when they do? Yeah, no. oh. <laughs> I'm under the gun. No. Okay. Um, I mean, I've, we approve. Yeah, I would say we can. I mean, it's not like we get anything from the state. Yeah, that's solution. Yeah. So I would um say we conditionally approve it based on the clerks having the information. Yeah. And the funds. On the website for the DLL, it does say they're all submitted to the town. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Is there a second? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Glad you were here. Hey, two cannabis for Sunday Drive. And again, this is state controlled, and all we do is bless the flight or not. Um, you have the option to take take action uh, if the board chooses. Um. This is a renewal for um, Sunday Drive that I think has been existing now for a few years. I'm not sure if someone Sunday Drive is. She said she was away. Okay, I thought she said she was going to be coming. Okay. Well, you want to make? You want to make a motion? The Sunday Drive. Can we, we renew the Sunday Drive cannabis permit? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 The application for Wooly Manor. Someone should be here for that. Hi. Yep. Did you mind to come on the podium? Hi. Hello. Say your name for the record. Uh, Jesse Werner. And uh, I represent Wooly Mammoth, which is uh, going through the license process to be a retail cannabis store in the town of Woodstock. And we've been pre-approved by the cannabis board and pre-qualified, and we are just waiting on our occupancy from the state fire marshal. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Is there a motion? Yeah, I'm reading through. I think that we have second limited. Yeah. Yeah. So. Do we even need a? Yes. yes. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve Woolly Mammoth Retail Cannabis License. Is there a second? Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Next is the fire truck purchase. So I think this is uh, the third time Chief Green has been from the board. Um, he presented uh, two, three months ago, uh, kind of an overall package. Uh, yeah. The board asked for uh, Chief Green came back last month uh, with kind of more defined numbers. Um, then the board um, did not want to take any action at that point. Uh, they want to make sure the public were aware of this being a potential vote. Uh, so we have it under votes today. Um, so David, Chief Green's back again. Uh, I don't know if you have more information or if there's more questions from the select board before we go forward. No, I have no more information, but hopefully my luck is as good as the last few that just went right through here. <laughs> yeah. oh, um, one, uh, thank you for coming again. And also thank you for the fire department for providing the chicken at the East End celebration a few weeks ago. That was a highlight. Um, can you just refresh us on why leasing is not an option or a less favorable option for these two trucks as opposed to outright purchasing? Yeah, so uh, leasing, they're really, you're really combining a lease and a loan word. So anybody that that we're going to give, whether we go through Mascoma Bank or E1, they call it a lease, but it's it's essentially a loan. Um, Mascoma Bank has typically always been much cheaper in interest rates because they're local versus E1. Um, but we do go out to bid on that one. There used to be a lease purchase program, but there really isn't anymore. Or you would pay over X number of years and then hand them a dollar and you own the rig. Thank you. Uh, hmm? Well, there's two different trucks. Right. So we need to yeah. break it down our discussion into the two tr yeah. trucks. Sure. Right. Yeah. So, if you had a choice, which would be your first choice? Well, it would obviously replace the one that will be 30 years old when we hopefully get one delivered. Uh, the latter was on our need list to protect the town properly, but the engine is a need now to keep our fleet current. The fire engine that we'd be replacing is about 26 years old. It's 25 years old, right? 25 years old. And if we buy it now, it will be delivered four to five years from now. Four to five years, yes. So the truck will be 30 by the time we yes. replace it. I mean, I think that's. And there's no payment until we reach. No it. payment until the day it arrives. No ladder truck? Excuse me? Ladder truck? What about it? Oh no, that that is oh, no, I know it's a pump truck, but the ladder truck. Is there any that's basically for downtown and well you know, no, it's not for any building in yeah. Woodstock. I don't know where everyone else is. I'm of the mind that we should approve the purchase of the engine and replace that. And that the ladder truck is a nice to have at this point. I think one of the best things we can do right now for fire safety uh, is own the water company and work on fire department retention. Um, so that's kind of where I'm leaning, but surely, you know, if the public has thoughts, they are welcome to. There is one public comment online. We're going to do it in a second. I'd love to hear some public comments. But I don't know if the board wants oh, to. Yeah. Well, yeah, maybe yeah. the board wants to finish I, up. I, I'm of similar mind to Laura, particularly we haven't had a ladder truck since the 90s. So it's hard with every other thing we're doing in this town right now um, with expenses. It's hard to justify buying something that we haven't needed and you know, or we've been able to get it. Maybe we've needed it, but we've been able to not. Thank you. And um, so I am of like mind. I agree. Yeah. Oh, that's Carrie. That's yeah. Carrie. Thank uh, you. Joe has her hand up. We'll wait till the select like the board's finished. With their that was my way of thinking too. Unfortunately, it's a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> Not going to get any cheaper either. I get it, but um, I think right now with everything we got going on, I'd be inclined to replace the engine for sure. And then we'll see what happens in the future. Maybe you'll win the mega bucks and you'll buy. Exactly. One. <laughs> I'll donate it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if you want to go to the 
public. Uh, I think Jill, are you hand up first? Um, so I'm afraid I've missed a few meetings, but I have caught up with some of the discussions. Before you take a vote, could you just provide a, a summary of what's being asked for rather than launching into the middle as if we all know what we're talking about? Because there's nothing written in the packet. Yeah, so um, we have uh, a fleet that's out to date, uh, outdated. Um, if we order a truck today or an engine today, it's not going to arrive till four to five years um, at the earliest. Uh, payment will be due on arrival. Um, David, you have the numbers. Was it one point? Yep. Two. Call, call it one point one for a new engine, and the latter truck we were discussing is one point five. And. Then and uh, so when once you we go, if the board approves something, then we'll go out for bid, and those prices will be firm at that point. Yes, it's a it's a long process to go on because we have to build it, design it, we have to get input from the companies of what they can and can't do, the special needs Woodstock requires for their trucks for approach and depart angles and other things. So it's a lengthy process, which is know the times are in, which is the reason I brought this for pre approval right. because it is a very lengthy process. And so then are we are is OSHA requirements that we think are coming. possible. possible. We'll have to see what happens. That dictate how long the trucks can stay. Right. Right. So, so tonight, are we just discussing fire engine two or are we going to discuss any of the others? We're just talking about fire engine two and a possible ladder truck that we don't current we're not replacing. Okay, thank you. Are there other comments from the audience? How old is the? Um, it's a 1999. No matter, sir. It it would be an addition to our fleet. We don't own one. Um, so just before the board then takes a vote, I just want to remind them that uh, if you vote in favor of going for this process, you're kind of locking into the budget process for the next five to 10, 15 years to allocate enough funds to pay for the loan and, and capital reserves before that. So I just want to make the board aware of that. And we can discuss in the capital, in the budget process and the capital plan, a plan for also the other trucks as well, a longer term plan exactly. for other so, trucks yeah. as they need to be replaced. Yes. Okay. okay. Is there a motion? I move that we approve the replacement of Engine two. Second, yeah. I second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Perfect. Thank you. Next up is the South Wood Rock Wastewater Plant Design Update. I think that'll be me. Um, as uh, just to give everyone a, a fairly brief history. Um, if you drive down 106 and see the Southwood Stock Wastewater Plant, it has um, created a lot of um, issues and um, at, at least at our public hearing, some anger at its appearance. Um, I don't think any of us were on the on the board when it was approved, but people aren't are um, feel that it is rightfully so feel that it's the gateway to Southwood Stock and that it is not attractive as it presently sits. The select board off authorized a committee, which um, Greg Fullerton and I served on. Peter Pickett and Tom Debevoice are in the room. That they served on the committee as well, as did Beverly Humpstone. We met a lot um, and we discussed a lot. The select board also authorized ten thousand dollars of ARPA funds to be used toward um, improving the appearance of the um, the plant and. Um, we actually had help from Vermont State University at Randolph students giving us some really neat designs that um, would have been great in a, in a perfect world. I think, again, the budget reality right now is we can't ask other sewer users and taxpayers to really pay for um, changing the appearance of that. We do feel that the committee, or at least the majority of the committee, feels that lessening the impact of the fence, right now the entire property is fenced in with aluminum, you know, metal fence with barbed wire on top. And we really don't need to have that entire property fenced in. And it's actually 
creating some problems with snow removal as well. So we would like to um, propose to the select board that the fence get moved so that it just in, encloses what needs to be enclosed and also to paint the cement um, tank the same color as the office. And we have estimates that the fence would be um, roughly 5,000 and the paint 2,500. So we're within the ARPA funds that were um, dedicated to this project. And I, I will, I guess, look to my fellow committee members to see if there was, if I missed anything or if they had anything to add. Uh, Tom Dubbo voice. Uh, yeah, Tom Dubbo voice, and I was on the committee. Um, and I'd just like to uh, back up what Susan's saying. Not only does the fence make it look like the uh, backyard of the jail used to look, <laughs> um, but uh, it, it it really will save a lot of time and effort on part of the town employees when it comes to maintaining the property and especially with snow removal. Um, and so uh, um, and I know it's grant money, but it could have been spent on something else, but um, taking out or not taking all of the fence out, but restricting it to right around the buildings, I think will save the town money um, just in terms of employee time and maintenance. Um, so there's a, there is a, a bonus in there, um, not only in terms of, of uh, making the uh, approach into South Woodstock not um, look as it does now, um, but also just from a practical standpoint of maintaining the, prop, the sewer plant property. Thank you. Peter? Yeah. Yep. Okay. My name is Peter Pickett. Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Um, and uh, uh, just putting the fence around the plant and then around the generator just makes all the sense in the world to me, as Tom pointed out. You said painting the building. What about putting siding on it and and something between the top of the concrete and the pipes above that made it look like a roof. I don't know if there's enough $2,500 seems like plenty of money to be able to do that. Uh, and then it would look more like a barn and fit the context of the, of the town. My understanding from the engineers um, that, um, was that you can't just put siding on the building because it's concrete and there's moisture. So you would have to put some kind of barrier, barrier Last, in yeah, between. I, yeah. and, I, and um we did not get quotes for that, but I would be surprised that they would be less than the five thousand we have left with the grant money. The budget thing I don't I don't know about, but there's probably there's probably money available in the town to support any to I mean I'll bet you there are I know there are people who would be willing to, to contribute one two the uh, uh, the site engineer is a friend of mine and I don't mention his name but he said there's no reason why you couldn't uh, anchor uh, 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 strapping on uh, vertical strapping on the side of the building and then put your siding on it and it'll ventilate just fine that was what he said to me and I and I think that you know there there's definitely more, I think, as the students showed us too. I mean, they had some really, I thought, creative designs. And, um, you know, in a way, I think this could, you know, if, if the town of South, if the community of South Woodstock is interested, I think this could be step one. And, you know, maybe we then do some fundraising, as you suggest, to um, further improve it. But, you know, there's just not money in the town budget to do more than what was allocated. Frank? Um, well, if, <laughs> seems now there's no pricing for that. I guess we can't go ahead with this foolish to go ahead with painting. But there's a controversy here, I think, as far as attaching wood to the concrete. Um, 
uh, we were told by somebody, I can't remember who, that it, it could infringe upon the concrete by drilling in. Um, and other people are saying, no, it's fine to do that. Yeah. So that is my concern. Um, I think the engineers told us that. Yeah. Um, for one. And for two, the roof, um, th there can't be a roof on it. And I know you're saying simulate it, but um, I know one of your neighbors would not want that on there. I don't want anything above the railing. And they actually like seeing through the railing. No, it wouldn't be have to be above the railing. The, ra the railing is set back from the edge of the wall, and it would actually tilt toward it and just look like a roof, but wouldn't actually be a roof at all. Wouldn't interfere with any access to it or access for ventilation in, in the machine, in the plant itself. So, so it was just the it just the on-site foreman who said this. It was not an engineer who said this to me. So I I can't guarantee one, but it made a lot of sense to me. That's an easy solution. Can I? Sure. Yeah, of course. Go ahead. So I'm just one on the uh, rest of you. So just kind of speaking about the painting, um, the benefits of it is it's a three-part process. So you're going to have to prime it, paint it, and seal it. So in the long run, that could help save the life of the concrete. That's just a little tidbit to think about. Yeah. I think if we paint it, it doesn't preclude doing something else in the future. It just maybe makes it a little less glaring as we drive down the road. There, it, they say for security purposes, there has to be the kind of fence we have. I mean, I said, you know, so we fence. No, but I mean, it's hopefully panel. Oh, possibly, yeah, but yeah. not probably within our budget. Can you fix it? Mm-hmm. Certainly. But the, the problem is I mean, probably I probably have to be better about it, having you come up to the podium and introduce yourself. Sorry, I'm I'm slipping. <laughs> I, Fraser Woodstock, just wondering if there's anything you can do with landscaping that would uh, sabotage the the way the fence is, because I know you know having take my car there. <laughs> um, there seems to be that there would be room to do plantings that would disguise the ticket the fence and and mediate the concrete too. Oh. And, the and that could be a lot less expensive. Yeah, so we looked into all these options last summer with the oil tanner engineers. Uh, the landscaping was uh, a concern that I could get into with the actual concrete and uh, and the roots could get underneath and cause oh, issues. Yeah. And also that the landscape wouldn't survive with the salting that gets done in the winter. Um, so they did not see that as a, a feasible solution. Um, but we did look into that last summer. Okay. Uh, Senior McRoy has a hand up on Zoom. Yeah, just a quick question, just because I can't picture it right now. But the fencing that's being taken away, uh, does the remaining fencing uh, secure everything that needs to be secured? Yes. Yeah. yes. Okay. So accidental or intentional hit would it would protect from that. Yes. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. The, the the existing fencing would stay around the actual plant, and I believe there would be something around the generator. Yeah. Yeah. But there's a lot of space in between those two structures where it wouldn't need to be fenced, and it's just right. cement, right? Yeah. Currently, the fence is 125 feet long. That's something new. Yep. So I, well, I think Eric felt that because it's a town property, yeah. we needed to vote. So yeah. I would move that we authorize the expenditure of the ARPA money that was set aside for the fence and the paint. Do a second. I'll so, second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Next up is the gravel and sand bid recommendation. And our, and paving as well, sorry. Yeah, paving. Paving, yeah. skid steer, and anything else you want to put on this? <laughs> I'll try to make it short and sweet. 
We appreciate that. Uh, I know you guys have a lot to do today. So um, over the last couple months, we've gotten two or three bids for the sand, gravel, uh, and paving. The three companies were Pike Industries, Twin States, Sand and Gravel, and Casella Construction. Um, I'll start with the aggregate, which is the three-quarter hard pack. Pike Industries came in cheapest at 19.20 a ton, so I would say Pike is the could be awarded the bid. And then on the sand bid, same three companies. Uh, Pike came in as the middleman. Uh, Casella was way above, and Quinn State was a little lower, but because of the service that Pike provides, I would also advise to go with Pike. And, and also, just on that too, there has been times in the past um, when the lower bidder did not have the supply needed, um, but Pike has always had enough supply for us. So even though the cost may be a little different, the recommendation is the security of knowing when you need it, it's going to be there. Uh, constant flow to the town. Outweighs uh, uh, the cost savings. So this is for sand? The, there's one for aggregate, which is a three-quarter hard pack. Pike was the lowest out of the oh. three. Sand was a uh, wash manufactured and three-eighths ledge. That's their middle. Um, All within a dollar to two a ton. Did you get anything from DMV? No, nope. so we still have the sand as a three-part process. It's the three-eighths manufactured, and then the screen sand, which right. is brown. Yep. One company came in astronomically higher than what we usually pay, so it'd be nice to solicit some more quotes, bids, and see what they come back with. Yeah. Yeah, for the screen sand. Green but sand. I think we should go with Pike with the washed and the yep. uh, three-eighths light. Yep. What's that? Well, uh, one of the things that Pike included with their aggregate bid was some other materials that we typically use throughout the summer, seven inch erosion stone. So they're giving us special pricing on that as well. Um, you want to go into the paving too and get them both out of the way? This yeah, um, I think we have be best to vote on the, the bids for the sand first and then move to paving. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the bids that uh, Chris is recommending. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay. Um, as for paving, I've got two companies, Blacktop and Vermont Roadworks. They put in bids. Um, it is for College Hill, Cross Street, and Mechanic Street for the roads in the village and about 1,400 lineal feet of sidewalk, including Route 4, South Street, and Golf Ave. Uh, Vermont Roadworks came in at a lower bid, and we've done work with them in the past and been very happy with their work. Both the bids were higher than our budget of $45,000, so I had them break down each and every street and sidewalk, so basically we can pick and choose what we feel needs more work than the other. Um, so I feel we should go with the Vermont Roadworks for the paving bed. And I have the breakdown here if you'd like to see it as well. So they're uh, 65,000 for- um... Yep, so Vermont Roadworks came in at yeah. 65 and some change and black top was 86,000. And you have 45 in a budget? 45, correct. 45 in the budget. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm willing to improve up to $45,000 if anyone wants to make that motion. I'll make the motion. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And last but not least is over the last couple months, been trying to put some close together for a skid steer purchase for the sewer department. Um, they no longer have a piece of equipment to move around their pumps and heavy chemical totes that they need. Um, reached out to three companies, Caterpillar, John Deere, and Kubota. Uh, with, let me see, two buckets, forks, and a bunch of 
snow removal implements, I think four to be exact. All three of them were within one to two thousand dollars of each other, actually. Uh, Caterpillars out of the running because I asked them for a price on a hundred horse machine and they came back with 75. So they, as I asked. Um, with the prices being somewhat similar, I would go with the John Deere machine. And I can give you plenty of reasons why if you'd like to hear. Can you give us a few reasons? Um, well. <laughs> Uh, so the breakout force between the two, which is how much the bucket can curl back on one or the other, is roughly a thousand pound difference between the Kubota and the John Deere. Service intervals are a little bit longer with the John Deere, so that's going to be a cost savings for the town. Um, the warranty is a little bit longer, six year versus a four year with Kubota. And even though these machines are fairly well evenly matched in price, we're still getting more of a percentage off of the list, listing price with a John Deere versus the Kubota. So you're getting more of a machine than with Kubota. I think the list price for the John Deere is 106000 and we're getting $30,000 off it versus Kubota is only a, $10,000 rake off, I believe. And this is all money that's all in the capital. It's which I believe you talked about that the last meeting. Yeah, for reference, last meeting, the select board voted to reallocate um, money for a capital reserve fund. This year. The uh, serviceability is a lot better with the John Deere. You can get to everything you need to get to in the back of the machine as far as hydraulics, batteries. Um. Do you have a set of, this is a track machine? Yes, this is a track machine. Do you have forks for it also? What's that? Forks? Forks, yes. Yep, so it's going to be <laughs> two buckets, a construction bucket, which is a little bit smaller, and then what they call a light material bucket, snow bucket, a little bit bigger heel on the bucket, so it'll take snow. Uh, Heavy-duty forks, a eight-foot snow pusher, a snow blower, a plow, and... Uh, yeah, that was it. I'll make a motion to approve the purchase of the fleet. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Hey, that's it. Thank you. Thanks. Chris. I am headed out. <laughs> <laughs> You're up next again. <laughs> he doesn't want to be. He knows what's next. Yeah, Elm Street. <laughs> oh. So there is um, a manhole at the beginning of Elm, Elm Street Bridge um, that has <clears throat> some serious issues with it. Uh, we've had both Scott Jensen from um, the state and Michelle Cobb out as well. Um, they both recommend having it fixed before the winter. Yeah, that's a picture, yeah. Uh, so we have one picture. I, I can uh, actually share my screen and show some more pictures. Um, give me one second. So if you're headed north towards the Elm Street Bridge, towards the right, down over the bank, over the years, all the ice jams have scoured away all the concrete and the stone away from the manhole. So the, the scope of work is to get a machine down in the river and bring all of the stone, big stone, up out of the river to start protecting that manhole again, and then pour, not a wall, but put cement back around that so it's prepared for next year, year after, so on and so forth. Because there's a possibility that the ice is gonna take it right off and then issues. So that's just below the Elm Street Bridge? Yeah, it's, it's to the right. Do we have a cost? What's that? Do we have an estimate? Yes, I believe it's $117,000 yeah. through Daniels. Yeah, it's in the packet. And do we know, can Daniels get this work done in the yes. next few months? Yep. So it's been advised that we get it done before the end of this year. And I think our deadline is before the end of October, we have to be out of the river. And how long will it take? Not very long. Okay, like a 
say? Uh, I would say four maximum. I know. Don't hold me to it. No, I mean, it's just helpful to understand. Um, okay. It, it's going to be a fairly easy project. They're going to be able to bring the machine from downstream or upstream, either way. Walk the machine up. We have all the permission to do that. Great. Smaller machine comes up. They move all the bigger rocks out of the way. Uh, they, they're going to gonna terrace it from smaller stones to larger stones as it gets closer to the river. Okay. Um, and then I think they're going to be pumping the concrete or the grout, they call it, grout. in and around the, the manhole. Okay. And where's that money coming from? Coming from? <laughs> um, so there's uh, about $170,000 in the capital reserve for repairs and maintenance. Uh, what I thought we would do is try to take as much of the operating budget that we could and anything left over we could use from the, from the sewer. Uh, there's also a about $290,000 for a sludge truck uh, committed uh, in the sewer reserves. Um, we could allocate some of that money too. We don't need a sludge truck right away and then build up that back up if need be. Um, but the hope would be try to use as much operating as, as we feel comfortable with and take the rest from capital reserves uh, to fill, uh, do the rest. Is this from the building? Sorry, can you cut? Okay, I'm going to ask. Up. You got to come to the thing. I'm slacking here. <laughs> so does so it does it come out of the villages? I have to say your name. Oh, Karen McGee. Oh, sorry. Yep. Um, does it come out of the village um, budget? Oh, it'll come out of the sewer budgets. Oh. So there's so there's uh, three budgets. We have the town operating budget. We have the village budget, and then there's the sewer budgets. Uh, the sewer budget is um, uh, an account that only is based off revenue brought in from sewer usage. Um, so only sewer users would pay for, pay for those. Oh, okay. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the proposal from Daniel's construction? I move we approve the proposal for. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Nope. Daniel. Oh. <laughs> I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And we can just make sure to update the public when that happens. So yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Chris, is there a way that it can happen after Indigenous People Weekend? We were thinking to do it during people. <laughs> <laughs> when I would do it. <laughs> You're gonna be in a river. What difference does it make? Yeah. There's gonna so Elm Street is gonna have to have traffic well for a while. Because they're going to have to have the pump truck up top going down. Yeah. It really won't. But yes, we'll try to schedule it so it's not interfering with. But you don't need to close the road. You just need to close one lane. Yeah, it's just going to be one lane traffic. Yeah. Okay. And you can't go to Cloudland Road now, so nobody will be Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Don't quit your day job, Chris. <laughs> okay. Next is the EDC funding recommendation. Before we start, I just want to say I'm disappointed in how this was proposed. Um, things were purchased before the site board approved or disapproved the funding, which I think is not proper etiquette and way we have done things in the past. And um, very disappointed in how that happened. So with that, who wants to speak to it? Uh, Ray, this is John Spector. I'm sorry that I'm not on that I'm not there or on a camera, but uh, I'm in my car. Um, so the EDC actually has two proposals. We submitted this one and then a much smaller one, uh, both focused on addressing issues during uh, foliage of of the issues that create, uh, you know, that tourism has created and that the residents um, and visitors both are concerned about. Um, I'll let, I don't know, I saw that Lisa Lawler is um, is attending the meeting. I don't know, Lisa, if you would like to pr present the proposal or if you'd like me to just summarize it. I, I, we did not coordinate beforehand, I apologize. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Uh, John, I'm not sure if Lisa is still on okay. or not. Uh, or if she's uh, up I'm on, but um, I don't know how to work anything. Um, John, why don't you go ahead? All right. So um, 
one of the, uh, in fact, I think the most uh, significant uh, raised by uh, visitors in our visitor survey, and also, I think the most, or maybe the second most uh, significant concern raised by local residents in our resident survey was the difficulty in getting food during foliage season. Um, this proposal is put forward by the trustees. The EDC voted to recommend it to the select board. Uh, you have it in front of you. It's relatively straightforward. It's uh, focused on the two months of September and, and through to mid or the third week in October. Um, it's a total of $7,000 for picnic tables, umbrellas, uh, uh, costs associated with having um, food trucks come to pay for insurance and things of that sort, uh, some salary uh, costs to take care of additional costs for the town, uh, public works department, um, a cost for additional porta potties also that goes along sort of with the food um, and life in, and uh, sorry insurance for the program. Uh, and then there's a nine eight hundred or nine hundred dollar miscellaneous which might not be spent. Um, so it's, I guess, it, I suppose the grant request is for up to $7,000. Uh, uh, and then, uh, you know, if the additional funds aren't spent, then it would be, the, the EDC, remember, reimburses. We don't give out the money in advance. So it would be between $6,200 and $7,000. Uh, I think that's, I, I don't know if, unless Lisa wants to add anything that pretty much sums it up. I mean, there's a couple of little details in the proposal that you have. Sorry, my laptop is frozen, so I can't get to it. But I think you have it in front of you. Okay. Okay. So first I'd like to say that I, I attended the uh, event uh, at uh, Billings Farm. TEDx, which was about awe, and it had an impact on me, and I and it kind of related to how I'm thinking about about what's happened here. When people first come to Woodstock, one of the things a lot of people experience is awe. Sometimes that fades away after you've been here for a while, but when you leave and come back, the, the sense of beauty uh, of Woodstock is there. Last year was the worst situation we've ever had, especially on Sundays and Mondays, for satisfaction of people visiting Woodstock, primarily because they couldn't find a place to eat. And it affected their whole atmosphere. I mean, I, I know that because they come into my store and I heard it, and uh, it's the worst I've heard in 46 years. I don't want to see that repeated this year. The uh, the EDC came up with an idea of how we could do better at that. And the trustees came up with an idea of how we could provide more food service. And the food service, it's all coming out. You're going to see these all over town uh, with telling people how much, where, or the dates that more food will be available on the village. Um, there's eight different providers. There will also be a food truck in the parking lot of the uh, history center which they they want to have happen there um to have this food that'll solve a lot of the problems however people with more food need a place to eat to sit down and we don't have enough room for that in the plan unless we have picnic tables and so i'm sorry ray that uh, i that was the part of the project i was dealing with I went ahead with it before tonight because they were being built. And they, if we started tonight, they wouldn't have been built in time, the ones that we wanted. They wouldn't have been built in time. Um, so I'm sorry. I agree with you. That's not the normal way of doing things. But the reason it was done this way was the select the trustees were unanimous in wanting to do this. The EDC was unanimous in wanting that approved by your board here. Um, and I think that uh, when you think of what the voters initially said they want, the 1% tax to go towards business and community vitality. And certainly this qualifies for that. 
what what the voters voted for. It's not that much money, but it is significant compared to nothing. The, for instance, the, the figures you were given aren't quite right because um, we were able to negotiate them down a bit for the six picking tables, including the delivery, including the drilling of them for umbrellas, including nine green nine foot umbrellas. The, um, and all those expenses totaled uh, $2,548. Grant, I I urge you to consider that although this is not something that um, was involved in long range plumbing nine umbrellas, what the nine umbrellas or six? Oh, I meant six. I'm sorry, I meant to say six. Nine foot. Okay. Oh, I did say that. Okay. Yeah, nine foot umbrellas. There's six of them. Um, I think that. It's important to understand that although this wasn't budgeted for far in advance, um, that was maybe something we could have done, but we didn't. Um, the select board didn't think of budgeting for the Department of Public Works extra expense for, for trash on the weekends, the four uh, big weekends of the weekend. That wasn't done in your budget. Um, we think this is one way to pay for that. Uh, that the amount of trash that was overflowing was off. Um, and this is one way of paying for it without it coming from other sources. If you don't agree with the whole thing, uh, I th please consider approving part of it. I think to keep in mind that the, that the, uh, the picnic tables are an asset to the town going forward, and uh, we'll be able to use them every year. Um, and so that's a little different than something that uh, the porta potties, which I think we could live without it's this it's not it's going to be really bad on two weekends but anyway I think that and the providing funds for the trash are the two most important parts of this project and so that brings it the total down if you would consider parts of it more in the realm of uh, about 2500 plus 11 uh, 2548 plus uh, 1100 or so for the trash extra trash so I would recommend that uh, you, you can you consider doing the whole thing for the benefit of the citizens of Woodstock as well as the visitors and their experience during that month. Or if not the whole thing, please consider the picnic tables and the trash. Thank you. Get one question. Yeah, sure. Is a sale we pay a sales tax? We do pay a sales tax. It was on the bill. Uh, we shouldn't have municipality. No. So we can talk to them and get that refunded. Well, we could, well then we could get that refunded. And so, did I hear that there's already extra um, public works starting for the foliage? Or did I not hear that? Eric, so what we've done um, traditionally on busy times is uh, there has to be one person in wastewater working over the weekends for a set number of hours. So it's not busy with it. So typically we'll ask them. Uh, to kind of do a drive by and pick up anything. Um, this is for someone to come by on Saturday and Sunday between like three and six after lunch before the bear attacks and uh, pick up the, the trash then so they don't come in there and split it over the green and stuff like that. So this is kind of an extra above and beyond. Um, if we had a wastewater crew do trash pickup on the weeks on the foliage, that's all they could do and not be actually monitoring the system, which we need them to do. It is bear season. It is. So give them a real Vermont treat. <laughs> How you harvest? Yeah, that, that, that's an experience. I'm not sure if it's a, an ah uh, experience or something else, but okay. I'm just so, curious. That doesn't include that. Okay. Yeah. So here's some of my concerns. Um, this was identified as a problem after last foliage, but here we are on September 17th, being asked to do a kind of a EDC grant out of its normal schedule. So I find that disturbing. Um, we've had three joint meetings in the last three weeks where the select board and the trustees have all sat down together and identified goals um, at, toward economic development. And we identified um, that the water and the wastewater were our most important goals because you can have all the tourists come in the world, but if we don't have water and we can't flush toilets, it's going to be an even worse experience. 
we sat there and rated things, and I don't think the select board felt as strongly as trustees about this. And I wish there had been better planning back in latter October of 2023 and finding other funding sources than this last minute source. And I'm I'm bothered that it didn't come up in our joint meeting that this you know has come up now and um, that you know it, it, tables have been purchased and we have you know we it was not one of our high goals considering everything on the plate and everything that the taxpayers have coming down the pipe toward them. Well, Susan, I, I appreciate what you're saying. It, it wasn't ideal to have thought of this, and it was really at the EDC meetings that this came up first, and then the trustees responded to it and said, yeah, this would really be helpful, and let's get to work on that. Um, well, well, and, and, and Jeff, if, if I can interrupt for one second, I uh, the EDC, I will take responsibility for the timing of this, um, we absolutely, you're absolutely right. We should have considered this uh, much earlier in the year. We set up working groups. There's just sort of only so much work that we can do. We have no staff support. Um, and, but however, it is, it was the EDC's responsibility, I think, to respond sooner to the concerns that were raised last October, not the trustees. At any rate, I, I thank you, John. Um, I, I don't disagree with you. And, you know, obviously I've attended those same meetings and I agree with these long-term goals. This is something I don't foresee continuing to happen. We're talking about how do we start doing things differently, but this is right. And this is a need that's very strong 10 days from now. Very I think, uh, Jeffrey, I think that that's to Susan's point then. Like if this is such an urgent need, this should have been communicated and highlighted earlier. I mean, the survey, I don't know when the survey was done. I think it was done earlier this year after last foliage. It puts us in an incredibly difficult position because if we deny this grant, you are left to scramble for that funding for the tables you've already purchased. And then we have to schedule a special meeting. Our admittedly overworked municipal manager has to schedule a special meeting for the trustees to find funding for this. If we approve it, we are, implicitly agreeing and communicating that we are okay with this type of process that is reactionary, that provides Band-Aid solutions to problems that are much larger than this, that we've agreed to have strategic solutions for. So I, I'm frustrated with my board members and I really don't know how to vote on this, to be honest, because I feel I'm disappointed for our community and for our taxpayers that we have agreed to move forward in a different way. And if we do not move forward in step, we will continue to waste taxpayer dollars, to waste staff time and perpetuate the same problems that we are trying to resolve every meeting. Well, these dollars don't forget where the EDC dollars come from. No, the EDC does not have their own funding. No, they don't. I'm talking about the dollars that they, that they spend on your approval. Comes in the room and meals tax. You know that. Mm -hmm. The meals, rooms, and alcohol tax. Room, yes. yes. Meals, yes. Most of which comes from the Woodstock Inn and a few other businesses. The vast majority. The, the thing is, I don't disagree with you about this process, but however, to shut it down, to say, no, we won't support it, is going to hurt the business community, the citizens of Woodstock, and, and, uh, and everyone who's coming to visit. So I'm saying you've already heard from by doing let's it. Look at let's look at the amount of dollars we're talking about versus these all these other big funds uh, sources and that we have and expenses and they are real and they're big. This just is because this is important, but it's Jeffrey, not just because this is a certain amount of money does not mean it's not important. Okay, it is important. It's extremely it's, important. It's important. Saying, just because it's a small amount of money doesn't mean that we should just automatically approve it. Don't automatically approve it. Instead, think about the alternative, if not approving it, what is your, how it affects okay, the great. people who come to this. Town. What is your contingency plan if we do not approve this today? We'll have to come up with another one. You don't have one currently. Well, yeah, the contingency plan is to find uh, emergency discretionary funds that we were, not, we're not planning to spend in this direction versus funds that the EDC would have access to upon your approval. And remember that the, in the last quarter of funds that came into the EDC, 
they received far more money than they were expected. The EDC does not receive money. Okay. Okay, the money. The language here is very important because there are people who are under the assumption that the EDC is an appropriated committee. Tax. They are not. All right. The one percent tax. The monies that come in quarterly were much higher than expected. For in most recent news that came in, I think John reported that in August. And so they're sitting on money that's beyond what they've asked you to spend, or they have other things committed to. And, and I think it's $30,000 more. I think that if you look at what we're talking about is a few thousand dollars here that uh, of uh, that room and meals tax would, that would pay for this. And it would be a benefit to the, the people you represent and I represent and privilege stock. That's, that's the bottom line. Thank you for considering that. Thank you, citizens. I don't see any comments online. I'm begrudgingly, or do you want to, do you have any more? To approve the funding to the dining, season, dining EDC grant of, what was it, $7,000? Up to $7,000. That could be $7,000. I... Since we have Chris here, I'm also curious. I know yeah. you're somewhat understaffed, and I'm wondering if if this was the extra staffing from Public Works was discussed with you, and if you have that kind of personnel. Uh, it was discussed, and no, we don't have it, but we'll make sure we always do. For lack of any better word. Mm -hmm. I want to move on. We have a full agenda tonight, and we have way bigger fish to fry than this, but this is so indicative of the kind of process that we are trying to leave in the past. And we still need the motion. Yeah, I'm going to, I will make a motion to partially approve the funding for the picnic tables begrudgingly. Um, I'm not going to vote to approve anything else. I don't think we need porta potties or porter, but we've paid for these tables. And, and, umbrellas. and umbrellas. Thank you, Susan. Um, so I will make a motion for that. Um, but I really think that it is important that we step back and look at how we are serving our residents in this community and how we can do better. $2,160. Sure. Is that I think, I think it was without that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I heard 25. But... Oh, so I think it sounds like we're willing to pay for the tables and the umbrellas, but you're gonna have to figure out a way to get them stained. Is that what I'm hearing? They're, they're already... Of course, they are. <laughs> It's not a matter of them having to be ready, Jeffrey. It's a matter of how this is. Well, I think I think that we just approve the tables and the umbrellas, and the village finds a way to come up with the other four hundred dollars. Sure. Is there a second? I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We got. We have a part two of this, right? Yeah. There's a. Can I? Uh, there's a second uh, proposal. Um, which suffers from the same uh, timing problem, although uh, there is a plan B for this proposal, and so I'll present both. Uh, the problem we're trying to address, uh, this is a proposal to fund a pilot test for a one-month pilot test starting on October 1st for a kind of an information brochure, which would basically uh, explain to people where restaurants are and which ones are open, where there are restrooms, public restrooms, and where there is parking. Um, it would basically be a map. Uh, and the proposed, there's a two parts to it. There's a physical part, a printed brochure, uh, and an online part with QR codes distributed around town and, and so forth. Um, both would have the same set of information. Uh, the proposal is to fund up to $2,900 for 
up to 10,000 copies plus um, a, a set of little plastic holder brochure holders that would be distributed to lodging properties and merchants um, to put, you know, to put out with the brochures in them. Um, the, I, I, rather than go through the details of the 2,900, I think it would actually end up costing a little bit less than 2,000. But given the spirit of this discussion, I can anticipate that since we do have a plan B, which is just to do the digital version, and the digital version will not cost the town anything, uh, will, the, the uh, options tax funds will not need, be needed for the digital version because volunteers are doing the work to build it and to um, and you know the small cost of distributing QR codes and printing them will just be borne by whoever has the printer that day. So, um, so it, it the the request is for up to two thousand nine hundred. I, I don't again. I we don't we have no idea what the demand for these are. But if it was only five thousand copies, it would be up to two thousand uh, dollars as a, as option A and the fallback option B. Uh, doesn't require uh, options tax funding uh, or, frankly, select board approval. Brenda has a I've got, yeah. I, oh, does Brenda want to yeah. say something? Yep. Brenda? If you're talking, you're on mute. Hello, Brenda. Brenda, you're on mute. Okay. Well, maybe she's just saying hi. Well, I, I could. I can say, sorry, if Greta, I, I know what she's going to say, but I can, if she can't say it, I'll, I'll say it, but she should get a chance. If I can't see uh, if she, is she available? No, she's not. I mean, hi, uh, hi oh, can you hear me? I apologize. I was just getting, I was, I was listening, but I had, it was in the bathtub with my kids. Um, or anyway, so I'll be brief, very brief. I just wanted to um, give a little more information about that. Um, I, I think that what John is talking about, it, that it could be, Two thousand dollars versus twenty nine hundred. I think we could get it to be even lower. Um, in my opinion, the plastic holders aren't very necessary. Um, and I want to just mention that in some places it's been quoted as nine hundred dollars in graphic design fees. What that is, is about five hundred to six hundred dollars for uh, a local artist, Alice Michelle, to do a really high quality watercolor map of the village that would be something that would be digitized and asset for the whole community to use for different things highlighting the things john mentioned the restrooms the parking and the restaurants and and um that and then you know like john said volunteer hours on the graphic design and formatting it'll basically basically be a one sheet that is a beautiful map on one side the other side has a qr code and just some basic information about the town and i just think it's it's something nice to arm the merchants with who get asked these questions all day long. It's something nice for the visitor center to have. It's just uh, a little bit more professional, but again, we do have the plan B. So I just wanted to be clear on those options. Thanks, Greta. Thank sorry, you sorry, you have to yeah. wait. Sorry, <laughs> you have to wait. Um, John, does the uh, I guess my first question is how are we measuring for success with this program if we don't know? If we don't know what? If we don't sorry, know, sorry. how are we measuring for success? We've said that this is a is a test pilot. I guess I'd want to know, like, are we? I think we. I, I think it would. It's very very qualitative. Um, I think we have kind of intensive anecdotal evidence that visitors are constantly asking merchants and even pedestrian residents, uh, where are the bathrooms? Where are the, you know, where are the restaurants that are open? Who's open? What restaurants are open today? I think the only way we could really measure success is to, uh, is to do a survey afterwards and, and see whether or not people felt that the information that was distributed helped to mitigate. I'm sure it won't eliminate it, but, you know, the help to mitigate that problem problem. Um, and I think that I think either I think wh whether we print the brochures or not, it will still be some if we just do the digital version, it will be what I'd call a weaker version of the test. And, you know, if we print the brochures and have them distributed everywhere, it'll be a stronger version of the test. And how are you guys staying on top of changing hours for businesses and restaurants? 
the app will allow any restaurant in real time to change the online version of the, uh, and so we're going to reach out. We're just waiting for this meeting. We're going to reach out to the restaurants, give them, there are 20, there are 23 restaurants in Woodstock that serve food. Um, we're going to give all of them the ability to update. The, the, the basic data will just be drawn from their websites or from Google. Um, and then we'll give them the ability to edit it in real time. And the, obviously the pamphlets, the brochures will not <laughs> magically change. Um, so. The brochures won't have any hours on them? The brochures will have hours on them, but they will be, but it will say, if we print the brochures, it will say these times are as of October 1st for, and, and they'll have the QR code on it. So it'll say, you know, check, check the hours, you know, check the hours at the QR code. Or, or it will just have the QR code. We haven't finished the design of the two sides of the paper that Greta described, but hopefully we'll be able to get the hours. But if we do print the hours, we will explain that those are as of October 1. And is the app, the Visit Woodstock app or a separate app altogether? It's a web, it's actually a web page. It's not an, it's not technically an app. I, people can't, so it's a it's a web page, a QR code which will point you to a web page, and it's not the Woodstock website. It's a custom app that I'm I'm just donating to the to the town. Is there a reason we're not integrating it to the Woodstock website? Uh, we're going to try to integrate it to the Woodstock website. However, there's an there we're investigating that, but it appears that there's an expense associated with that, and there are also it, it requires the. <laughs> It requires the use of, um, we're investigating that. If we can, we will. We're doing everything we can. It, we, it will look and feel like it's part of the website. Uh, it will be, a, it, it will, and the website will point to it, but whether or not it's actually delivered on the server that runs the website is what we're trying to investigate, which would make it a little bit, I mean, I don't mean to get too technical, the menu would appear you know we're, we're not trying to you know we're we're doing this in the in the time and cost available for free so yep i mean ideally yeah, i in think an it, ideal i don't world, i think it this, yeah it, it will appear i don't think people will i i don't think the major feedback that we get back from the online test will be that it wasn't on the woodstock website it would be ideal to do that, but it will. It, the website will have a link to it. It will have the same color and border. It will look like it. The menu will be slightly different because we can't replicate a dynamic menu on a separate site. So, uh, but I think it. I think as a pilot test, it will be a minor, you know, a minor improvement to be made in the future. Any other questions? No. no. What was the total cost, John? I'm sorry. Two thousand dollars? That's just for the paper. The app is free. Right. All right. So is there a motion to And how soon can are they going to be printed? If we approve this, how soon will they be printed? Our objective, well, the app will be online October first. Our objective is to have both available both for both of these things available for the month of October with 30% of the visitors in 2023 came during the 31 days in October, 30 days, of, no, 31 days of October. Um, so our, the online app will be available on October 1st. The, the printed brochures will either be available on the first or soon, you know, within three or four days after that. I, I can't tell you exactly yet. We don't know. We were waiting. We didn't, we did not procure we we haven't the artist offered to start work on it on the assumption that we would pay them and and we were not able to make that assumption appropriately so we we're waiting for the go ahead or not for for the design of the of the painting that greta said if we don't do that we'll just have a a map i have the same concerns with timing and you know, not planning ahead and feeling like people are about to arrive in Woodstock and and we're the bad guys for not approving this when it should have been planned well ahead. 
and a fund and funding sources could have been approved differently. They both. You're right. They're both an issue, but. And this is a pilot program. This is yes, right, John. Pilot program. It's a pilot because we would might want to use it year round. We would certainly want to use it in September and so forth. And and understanding Susan, understanding that you know I, I don't leaving aside the last grant, I, you're not under any, you know, you're not under pressure to do this. No, I, I, I understand. We have a plan B. It's not a it's not a bad plan B. It's really a question of whether you feel that funds should be directed to the issues that were concerning the community or, or not. I mean, I'm not sorry. I'm not trying to make it, you know, th th this set of issues that concern the community or another set of issues that concern the community. I think we've tried to set this one up so that you don't feel that that pressure. I appreciate that. I like plan B. <laughs> well, I was going to suggest that a motion to approve everything once the um, leaflets could be completed by distributed by um, Monday, October 7th. I'll second the motion. Any discussion? Opposed in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Nay. I don't Carrie? know. Carrie? Carrie's on. Oh, it's a tie. Carrie, Carrie, I think Carrie fell off. Well, then um, I'll consider a motion just to have them do the app. Plan I, don't B. Think we, I don't think they need No, I know, but you might as well. If, if this is a pilot program and it works good with the app, then next year, would it be worth reconsidering this? I mean, yeah. based on the survey, yeah. Yeah. on the yeah. results. Definitely. Sorry if you're asking me. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. That would be my goal. Okay. So, yeah, if there's no money being funded, then and, what is it about? All right. So, I guess we're at a tie because there's only four of us. So, I guess you're with the uh, plan B, John. Okay. Thank you very much i understand uh, ray before we move on just very briefly uh, you had informed me of a request for the edc and i have a brief comment about that it's sort of a technicality i know you have a long meeting could we just take one minute to discuss that request and one piece of information for you about it um, or do you not want to discuss that no let's we can i i don't know i don't know which discussion we had that you're talking about so uh, and I don't think you, this is, it's not on the agenda, so we really shouldn't be um, discussing. Okay, that's fine. Okay, thank you very much. Sorry about okay. that. Before we move on, can I make a recommendation that we don't entertain any more EDC grant proposals until we're done with the priorities discussion with joint boards? Yes. And not that it needs to be a vote. I just, yeah. I would like no, to make that recommendation. That's, um... One of our goals is redirecting and restructuring the boards. I feel like it'd be a waste of everybody's time if if we keep entertaining grant proposals. No. Um, yeah, I agree. And John's aware of that. Uh, yeah, sorry, that was the discussion, Ray and and Laura. Can I just? Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. I just have a, I have a, a quick comment about that, or two quick comments. First of all, I completely understand. I think it's a prudent thing to do, uh, and I would just like to. The EDC is anxious, and we explicitly discussed the idea of discussing what the priorities are with the select board. So, um, so I would just request, and Ray is working on the scheduling of that. that we're anxious and ready to have the meetings, meeting or meetings that Ray is working on. The second thing is, I just want to give you a heads up, and I think at our October meeting, there is one grant that I strongly recommend you allow us to consider. And I think we will approve it. We had, which is, I believe it's for $3,600 to keep the website physically up and running for another six months. We can't, we had last year, we, we, we expected or were trying to rebuild the website by now. That was a significantly over 
slightly optimistic estimate because we require the agreement of the chamber and the EDC and we have moved, I don't wanna throw anyone under the bus, we have moved slowly jointly at that issue. We only funded six months of the physical electronic support of the server, nothing to do with redesign, hoping that we would be on a less expensive platform. That is going to run out at the end of September or early October. And I, I think it, it, and the website will go down if we don't pay it. Okay, thank you, John. So we'll come forward. I, I'd like to just an exception for that. We would like to consider that grant. We'll bring that before you. Okay. Um, All right, I'll thank you. Pass his hand up. Um, um, yeah, uh, thanks very much, uh, Ray and, and the select board. I have, I have two questions, one related to this present discussion and the other kind of backtracking to the, um, <clears throat> to the Woolly Mammoth Cannabis uh, Retail Approval. Um, Tom, well, Tom, these questions that we can answer tomorrow like on a, on a call? Uh, uh, I have a deadline of this evening, unfortunately. I, well, I know, I, but we already, we've already gone over the cannabis stuff earlier. Well, all, I, all I need to know is the because the, um, the application materials were not in the board packet, and I've searched online at the Cannabis Control Commission and on the Woodstock website, all I need to know is the address of the location of the Woolly Mammoth proposed retail. Yeah, Tom, let's talk offline on that. There are some confidential issues the state provides for uh, cannabis licenses. Um, so we, you and I can talk offline on that. Uh, may I call you very first thing in the morning? Yes. Okay. And the other question I have is what is the total amount of dollars that have been allocated for the food infrastructure funding with the um with the the port of sands and so on backed out two thousand dollars and not just for the picnic tables picnic tables and umbrellas and the umbrellas just okay two thousand dollars just for picnic tables and umbrellas okay and uh i will reach out to you first thing in the morning then um uh, on the um, on the on the woolly mammoth question because I'm writing about that permit having been uh, uh, for a cannabis so potentially having been granted by the um, by the planning and zoning office. So thanks very much. Take care. Carrie has lost her signal. She's wondering if she should call. Um, can she call into the the Zoom number? Oh, sure. Chris, you're up again. <laughs> Welcome to I'm, the I'm a funny one, not you. We're going to talk about this tomorrow. First in, the, first, first in my office, 8 a.m. Yeah. Um, so Chris Barr has been in the position now as public works director for a few months. Um, he's obviously spoken in front of the board already. Uh, we thought it would be good to kind of introduce himself to the board, uh, kind of go over some of his goals and priorities for the department and let the board kind of ask him some questions as well um, as he now has his feet wet. I don't think I need to introduce myself again, but um, for the record, for the record, I'm Chris Barr, the director of uh, Public Works. Um, as of now, day to days are going very well, even though we're a couple people down. Um, since I took over, I can tell you the graders probably not been on the road five days out of two and a half months. Um, we continue to do ditching and put in new culverts on all ends of our roads, um, continue to do work in the village, make sure everything looks good on our part. Luckily, we haven't had any major infrastructure issues, so we've been able to focus a little bit more on brush and signage and paving and painting and so on and so forth. As far as long-term goals, um, this probably isn't what a lot of people want to hear, but it'd be nice to get back on a routine schedule for our equipment. Um, it's very important that we have good equipment and reliable equipment because we're we're the ones that are on the hook for keeping the roads clear, not only for the residents but also for um, fire and ambulance. You know, if we're not out, they're going to have troubles. Um, so that's one of my goals is to get back on track for the trading schedule for a lot of our equipment. Um, as far as the village is concerned, just keep making sure that we 
have the infrastructure that's working and keep it working. Don't want to get flooded. That wouldn't be good. Um, <laughs> and just continue the aesthetics of the village as far as our part is concerned. And yeah. So currently we don't have a schedule for new equipment. It's gotten a little derailed, so to speak. Yes. How do we get? Uh, it's going to be part of the capital planning we'll be doing this year. Yep. I'm going to eventually go through and make a list of all the equipment that is up for trade, uh, trucks, grader, loader, this and that, and we're, we're going to try to piece by piece work it back in. And also try to differentiate what's important. You know, the grader is it's, a, it's an expensive piece of equipment. Typically, it's a five-year trade, but... You know, there's really no reason why you can't keep it a seven year because it's you know, it's got a full seven year warranty. Yes, it has a lot of it sees a lot of hours, but you need to try to figure out, say, if we decide to keep it for the six years and then trade it before the seven, you still have an extra year of warranty. So that could be good for the dealership that's going to be getting the greater back. That extra one year of transferable warranty could help us get more trade in, so on and so forth. So. So the grader hasn't been able to go as much because lack of help? Or... No, the grader's been going every day, except for five days. One more question. What's my boat going to get graded? <laughs> it's been, I think that's been graded at least six times this month. Oh, it has yeah. not. <laughs> if we could add conflicts of interest to the agenda <laughs> over to make sure that the boy gets some special favors, that would be good. for the people. Do you expect to have, um, right now we're down two staff? Yes, one in the town and one in the village. Do you expect to have those vacancies filled before winter? I don't know. I honestly can't tell you. I hope to. Yeah. No one's applied? No. 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 One's no. no. It's tough. What would you say is the biggest barrier to filling those spots right now? Uh, why it's so tough to get somebody in the Yeah. There's nobody out there. Yeah, it's, well, it's yeah, and, and it, it's there is, but they're they're either happy where they are or yeah, not able to pay them. It, municipal work is tough to make appealing. Mm. You know, I don't don't want to put my foot in my mouth, but go for it. <laughs> but I will anyways. <laughs> um, you know, your typical CDL driver can go to a, a subcontractor and make a lot more money, and those people don't take into account the added benefits of working for a municipality because that's just not the way that a lot of people look at it. They can't say to themselves, well, I'll take a little bit less money, but I'm getting health insurance and this. But I, I wish that people would look at it that way because I think it'd be a lot easier to get help. Yeah. But I'm wondering also with the trends we're seeing with the changing climate, if there's uh, conversations we should be having in the budget cycle about where we're going to be needing to spend more money. Obviously, the roads take more work when we have more mm -hmm. rain events and stuff like that. Well, one of the things that we've done this year, as opposed to years previous years, is um, we've been doing a lot more stone line ditches. And <clears throat> typically, when we get a road grant, that's what's required by the state. So they'll say if you want to do any road widening, you got to do a stone line ditch with seven inch erosion stone. And we've kind of taken it upon ourselves to start doing that in shorter sections, you know, something that's more feasible that doesn't impact the budget as, as much. Helpful. And when you, just for context, when you and the team get together on Monday, like what determines where you go? Like which part of your work is, is like what you do well, for planning or versus like reactionary? Typically, um, the grader has somewhat of a schedule. They'll start on one end and make a circle. Yep. Once the grader gets one time around, it's more of spot. If, if somebody calls and says, well, Prosper Road is bad, then we'll take a day and we'll go to Prosper Road. And then once we start kind of getting more of those calls, we start the circle all over again. And, and then as far as ditches are concerned, it's, it's more we'll pick one end and we'll complete it. We'll go out to like the Pomfret area, still Woodstock, obviously, but out in that area, Austin Road, Hall Circle, Billy Road, 
do all the work that's needed out there, get the ditches complete, culverts opened up, and then once we're done in that area, we'll pick another section and we'll kind of go do that. But what we're up against lately is when you get 57 inches of rain in 10 minutes, yep. everything that we do gets covered back up again, and then we have to go. It's, it's one step forward and two steps back. Yeah, That's what makes it tough. Well, I would imagine other public works departments across the state are dealing with the same thing. Oh, yeah, it's, it's not just that. Yeah, no. Yeah, and I wonder if there's anybody that's, that I'm not, you know, not that there's anything new to be done, but maybe there's a way of handling or planning for it that's been thought of that we haven't gotten to yet. Well, the tough thing with Woodstock and a lot of the surrounding towns is these roads are so old that they're just not ready for that amount of rain. And it's hard to say we're going to fix all the roads because that's a major undertaking. Yeah. So we have to pick an area that we know is a problem and we've had problems in the past and try to fix that during the spring or the summer and piece by piece. And then hopefully it's all, you know, it's all fixed, but that's, it'll never happen. Unfortunately, it's yeah. just going to keep going day by day. Anyone else have any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. You're not staying for the rest. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Thank Chris. You. Discussion goals. Um, yeah, so I just want to update the public that um, the site board and the trustees have a meeting uh, about two or three times now to discuss their goals. Um, they kind of circle around housing development, effective and efficient government, affordability, and climate resiliency as kind of the four goals major goals are looking at um, things they've discussed uh, in the past and will continue to discuss is the purchase of the aqueduct uh, water system and capital projects, uh, the main wastewater plant upgrades, um, potential merger between town and the village, um, the redirection and uh, condensation of the committees and commissions, granted capital plan, um, using new technology like permanent software, um, finding ways to calm um, the traffic and have more pedestrian zones. Um, uh, they talked about having the full age experience, uh, work more with the chamber on that, um, improve town hall tech uh, was one of them, update uh, zoning bylaws, uh, look at short term rentals again, um, repair and improve village built buildings, and then also um, ways to communicate better with the public. Uh, so we've talked about them a few times, there'll be one or two more meetings. Um, we encourage the public to attend those and let your uh, opinions be heard on all those topics and more. And then once those goals are kind of set and voted on, those will kind of be the goals the board uses for the next year, directs myself and my staff to kind of follow those goals and the committees as well. Uh, the next meeting is not scheduled, but hopefully we'll have it within the next two weeks. Budget discussion. Which flows right into that FY26 budget discussion. Um, I've been saying in these meetings that it's too soon to kind of start reviewing that FY25 budget, but it's not too soon to start that FY26 budget. Um, so we'll be rolling it out hopefully sometime in early October. Uh, another joint meeting where we'll kind of set a budget schedule for the entire year, um, have department heads come in front of uh, both boards. Um, as I said before, we're looking at trying to do zero budgeting this year, which is a new concept for everyone, so that may take more time. Um, but I think the conversation we've had since the summer, lean up to now, has really kind of paved the way for hopefully a more in-depth and um, uh, strategic budget process than in years past. So um, it may take some more time, but I think we'll, we're starting to do things right, and I'm excited to see how this turns out. And again, I encourage the public to attend those budget meetings. Um, what gets discussed in those meetings and gets decided on, then goes to town meeting, and then what's in the budget and what the goals of the committee uh, of the boards are really dictate how we operate the town for the next year and with a capital plan, how we look to operate for the next five or 10 years. So then when people from the public can come and talk to us what they want to see in Woodstock, then we can create the budget that we think Woodstock actually wants. And so the more public feedback, the better. Yeah, um, so as we've kind of gone further down um, the road with the Woodstock Aqueduct and those negotiations, uh, the conversations with Hoyle Tarrant about the wastewater plant have kind of subsided a little bit as we try to focus on one thing at a time. 
Uh, we're still hoping for a vote at town meeting in March. Um, Coyle Tanner is currently looking at uh, the ultimate question of who pays for this upgrade and how that is allocated uh, between users and non-users. Um, so they're working with us and kind of trying to figure out th those questions uh, based on their experience with other municipalities. Uh, so doing that, um, our appropriation in Congress is still going through the budget cycle. Uh, I believe it's at the second or third to last stop. Um, it's around a million dollars still. Uh, so hoping that uh, Senator Welch can help us get that over the finish line and with the new budget. Uh, every little bit helps and a million dollars to the project would be very helpful. And also a sign that we have um, the state and the government behind us, you know, in this process. Next, uh, do we need still need to go into executive session? Yes. Okay. So I would like to motion to enter into executive session under one VSA three one three. Discuss potential contracts. Finding that premature general public knowledge would clearly place a public body or a person involved at a substantial disadvantage. So moved. There a second. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you so much. Great. Thank you very much. Can Okay, um, approval of the minutes of August 20th, August 26th, September 11th. Is there a motion? Motion to accept the minutes. Second? A second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to adjourn? So moved. A second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. You want to ride?